Well, well, dealing with the prophetic for a moment, Philip, and I and I kind of I, I address that because our church we see all the prophecies and everything. And I said, well, we've got to be careful of, and, and I, I really think God is really uh, focusing in on this is not to go beyond thus says the Lord. And I, I think what we got to be careful of is not to say more than what God is telling us. And I would, Preach. I've had people ask me, yeah, I've had, had people ask me, well, what about this? What about this? I said, I don't know. The Lord has not shown me. It's like Elijah. We think automatically because we're prophetic, we know everything. And that's not true. You know, uh, the woman who had the son that had died, she showed up to Elisha's house and she's upset. And Elisha says, I don't know what's wrong with her. The Lord hasn't shown me. Yeah. So uh, there are times that you don't have all the answers. And I, I gave an illustration to them that I grew up in central Florida and we were made to play outside. You know, my parents, so you go outside and play. It's a nice day. It's a pretty day. And you couldn't even come in for water. It's like you go drink some water out of the hose. Sure. And so in central Florida, the hose heats up. And when it heats up, when you go to drink out of it, we drink out of it right after each other. We would just pass it on, which may then have built in our immune system, you know, and we passed the hose. But when you, you mean, first turned on. You mean you got a hose? They gave you a hose? We, had we, had, we ain't drunk out of puddles. What are you talking about in Scotland? We yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, we played in a big. I'm sure, but you, you know, you wore kilts. We didn't wear kilts in, in Florida. So. Careful, 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 careful. <laughs> we get beat up in Central Florida if you wore kilts, but uh, you know. <laughs> so I grew up there, and we passed a hose. But the thing about drinking out of a hose, it tastes like hose. Sure. And so what happens is, whenever God speaks to us, a lot of times, it picks up some of us in the process. And, and there are things that we try to fit what God's showing us into well, what true. we desire. Preach we try true. to fit. And I mean, because honestly, I told you, you said, what do you see? Uh, we talked about 2021. And I said, you know, I, I've been looking at the story of a parallel story about a man by the name of Zedekiah. King Zedekiah was the last king <coughs> of, uh, of Israel. He was put there by Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian system, put him in power. I said, but the thing is, they took out his sons, uh, stole his vision, and uh, he was removed from office. And I said, I see for 2021 is whoever's wow. there is getting removed from office. And something's wow. going to happen to his sons. And it'll be his sons will be, will be uh, because Nebuchadnezzar killed his sons. Yeah, He killed the son of Zedekiah, blinded him, which was a picture of taking his vision. Yeah. So his vision, because he wasn't doing what they wanted him to do. And I really believe in 2021, the leader, the present leader, will not be doing everything that they want to do, that the Babylonian system wants him to do. It, they want to, they're going to want to go faster, Philip. They're, want to go, well, they're going to want to go faster. So they're going to pull him out. And Jeremiah, I mean, was prophesying during that period of time. But you had a, a faction that was split between Egypt and Babylon because Egypt had beaten the Babylonians at one time. So there was this split that was going on. But Zedekiah was the picture. I still haven't done that message, but I, I went to our church back before the election. And I said, listen, i got to share some of these things with you because some of this is going to start happening pretty rapidly. Yeah. And when it does, I don't want anybody to ever believe that I didn't say this before all this happened. So I wanted to make sure that people knew. And, and I said, this will be a, hey, I told our church that there's gonna be a third party started. I said, there's gonna be a third political party. And people came to me, it's, it's before the election. I mean, it's on video. Uh, my tech guy's here, he can verify. It was, before, it was before the election. I said, there's gonna be a third party. And I had people come to me and they said, yeah, the Democratic party is gonna split. And I said, I see Donald Trump starting a third party. Yeah. I said, that's what the Lord's showing me. Yeah. I said, I see, I see the third party. And I said, it's going to be, and I used the word populist. I said, it's something like the populist party. He's going to start his own party. And wow. lo and behold, he comes out this week and they're saying, he's talking about starting a third party called the Patriot Party. The Patriot party. But I had said that back in, I think, October, yeah. that, that it was going to happen. I spoke with you, Philip. Uh, when we met, it was at Judy's uh, 
uh, oh, yeah. funeral and we were having lunch together. I sure miss And her. we started, talking, we started to, I do too, both friends and I still see her walking around in the back of our church, you know, sometimes, her, you know. Her name <laughs> comes up in my feed all the time. It's like she's alive yeah. because she used to comment all the things and I, I miss Judy Zickland greatly. Yeah. Great friend. Well, you and I, if you'll remember, there was an earthquake in Turkey. That's Remember correct. that? And, yeah. and we were sitting down. It's in Izmir. And you said, well, I've been there. And I said, well, when, when they said Izmir, I said something in my my back of my mind said, that's one of the seven churches in Revelation. That's correct. And it is. It's the church at Smyrna. And we were sitting there talking. I did a message on it uh, that weekend. I changed my message. I said, this is a prophetic thing. It was a seven point something uh, earthquake. Like Smyrna that. is known as the persecuted church. It's the only church that it's one of the only churches that Christ complimented in his message, but they were the ones who went through bitter suffering. And it was like the Holy Spirit impressed me when I heard that earthquake. He said, whatever that is going on with with Izmir, Smyrna is about to happen in, in the earth. And it's about that. You see it happen. The church is about to be persecuted. And so now as the election has occurred, you're watching that persecution. You can see it trailing towards Absolutely. the church and towards persecution and, and towards all those who took stances uh, in the election. We're going to pursue those people, which a Absolutely. lot of those people are believers and Christians and are, are church people and pastors and leaders, spiritual leaders yes. like yourself. And and so you're seeing that cancel. Uh, they're canceling a, a lot of their ability to do a lot of what they're doing. Because I said way back, when COVID-19 first came out in the spring, people were saying, well, you can go online, you can do all these things, you you know, you can have online church. And I said, uh, I really felt in my spirit, there was more going on. And I told our church, I said, the, uh, the first week, I said, look, get ready. There's more going on here than, than you see with the eye. There's more than a, than a pandemic. And I said, don't count on online church. It's there for now, but I wouldn't count on it. I agree because with you. I feel like at any moment they can cut you off. I was praying the other day, and this two words came into my spirit: hate speech, hate speech, and it stuck with me for several days. Hate speech, and what I began to see <clears throat> was this cancel culture that we're living in, where I mean, a, a company can can erase the president of the United States. My God, what kind of we're in China. We're living yeah. in Russia. I mean, this is nuts. And yeah. what I began to see is that they're going to start using the term hate speech against the church, yeah. against the Bible. And they're going to say that whenever you talk about sin, yeah. you are going to end up, you're, you're offending someone. Yeah. Whether, it's, whether it's a sin of homosexuality, stealing, whatever. I mean, they're letting, they're letting out um, rapists and thieves people burning down cities and they're being taken to the courts and the courts are dismissing them. There's, there, there's no wrong anymore. And whoever points it out in the scripture, the reason why they hate the church so much is the church is the last absolute left in society. There is no more absolutes. The first thing Biden did blew my mind. The first thing this man has done is he's opened up that the boys that identify as girls can compete in sports, that they are back into the dressing room and into the showers next to your daughter and your granddaughter, and you can't say a thing. If you do, you're a bigot. You hate speech. And what they're going to do is they're going to literally use that premise to go through every part of the church so that if you don't marry same-sex people, that's hate speech. If you talk about, name it. You name it, and they will put you in a category. Your hate speech, and you're cancelled. And, uh, and and you're right. I mean, I think that what we're doing just now on these social platforms is only temporary, because they they are coming. They will be coming, and uh, unless the church realizes that first, we tend to get blindsided all the time. We tend to, you know, bump into the thing, the the, the great big elephant in the room, and we oh my goodness, I never saw you here. And it's time for the church to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We better get ourselves ready.